hey guys, in this video, the brilliant Mr. B is going to be taking you through looking at upper and lower bounds. 15 different examples at three different levels, slowly getting harder as we go through the video. Now, if all the examples here aren't enough practice for you, then there are loads more questions just waiting for you over on my website. Okay, so we're going to have a look at bounds, and bounds are basically the opposite of rounding. So let's look at the first question to talk about what I mean. So we want to find the upper bound of 220. I'm going to start looking at numbers that round up to 220. So for example, 219 would round up to 220. 218 would round up to 220. 217 would round up, 216 would round up, 215 would round up to 220. But then when I get to 214, that would actually round down to 210. So 214 is too small, it's not going to round up. So we finished all our numbers, all our whole numbers that would round up to 220. Now, next, we're going to look at numbers that will round down to 220. So, for example, 221 would round down to 220. 222 would round down. 223 would round down. And 224 would round down. But then, when we get up to 225, that would actually round up to 230. So 225 is not going to round to 220. So we don't need to look at that for now at least. Okay, so these are the whole numbers that would round to 220. So we could say that the upper bound, the highest number that rounds to 220, is 224. However, before we just do that, we're going to think about decimals because we're going to look at decimals as well. So what decimal numbers that are greater than 224 would round to 220? So we could say 224.1 rounds up to 220. 224.2 would round up to 220. And basically anything that's smaller than 225 is going to round up to 220. So it goes as far as 224.9. But is that the limit to the decimals we can use? We're saying 224 and 9 tenths. What about 224 with 9 tenths? and 900. That's also less than 225 and that's also going to round down to 220. How many nines could we put on the end? Well, we can put as many nines as we like, as long as we don't hit 225. We keep going on forever. So what do we do? Are we going to write 224.99 and keep writing nines forever as our answer? So one solution would be to write 204.9 recurring and just put the recurring dot above the 9 just to show that 9 keeps going forever and that would be an acceptable answer. 224.9 recurring would be the largest number that rounds down to 220. That is the upper bound. There is one last trick we can pull though and it's when those nines keep going on and on and on forever we're getting ever closer to 225 and you get so close in fact that it doesn't actually make a difference so rather than over complicating things and using recurring decimals we can just write the uh, the whole number that's right above it 225 and while if you had just that number it would be rounded upwards it's so close to 224.9 recurring that we might as well just write that down so that is also an acceptable answer so moving on to question two we have 7.1 and that's been rounded to one decimal place so what is the largest number the upper bound that would round down to 7.1 one. So we can follow a similar process and we can look at all the numbers that would round down. In the previous question, it was a number ending in a 5. So if we apply the same thing here, we would get 7.15. Now again, that number itself would actually be rounding up to 7.2, but that number is practically identical to 7.149 recurring. 
So we might as well write a simple version that's very, very close than overcomplicate it with a recurring decimal. But either of those answers are correct. So moving on to question three, just to a quick recap. 220, our answer was uh, 225. We added a five on the end. 7.1, our answer was 7.15. We added a five on the end. So 3.8, if we add a five on the end, we get 3.85. And again, that is a number that would actually be rounded up to 3.9, but it's so close to the decimal just underneath, which would be 3.849 recurring, that we might as well just write the whole decimal. Now we're going to have a look at lower bounds. So that is the smallest number that would round up to the number given. And we're going to start off with 80. So let's do some working out for that. We want numbers that are smaller than 80 that round up to 80. Now, when we looked at 220, we were looking at units. We're looking at, you know, 219, 218. So we're into nearest 10. We're looking at different units that round up. So one number smaller, two number smaller, for example. When we're rounding to the nearest integer, then we want the next place value underneath, which is going to be tenths. So for example, 79.9 would round up to 80. So we're looking at adjusting the tenths value. Because for example, something like 78 is not going to round up to 80. It would to the nearest 10. 80 is the nearest 10 to 78. But we're going to the nearest integer. 78 itself is already an integer. So we're going to be looking at decimal places instead. So we have 79.9. So what else could we have? 79.8 would round up to 80. 79.7 would round up, 79.6 would round up, 79.5 would round up. But when we come to 79.4, that would actually round down to 79. So that's too small, so we don't want that. So I think these are all of our answers in the tenths columns. Now, the next thing is, let's look at decimal places. So this 79.5, if we went down by another decimal place on 79.49, for example, that's now going to start rounding down. So we can't go that low, so that's not going to work. And other decimals like 79.51 is actually larger than 79.5. So I think 79.5 is actually going to be our answer. So let's write that down. Lower bound, the lowest number that rounds up to 80, the nearest integer, is 79.5. Now, before we move on, we're just going to try and find a pattern so we don't have to uh, do this working out every single time. So let's go back to that 220 and let's look at the lowest and highest number which rounded to 220. So the lowest was 215 and the highest was 225. And just notice how far away they are from 220. They're both five away. 215 is five below and 225 is five above. And we were rounding to the nearest 10. So five is half of 10. So our upper and lower bounds are 10 away from each other and we're rounding to the nearest 10. So that's quite interesting. So it seems like half of what we're rounding to is what we add on our takeaway. So when we look at question five, we're rounding to one decimal place. Well, we've already done some one decimal place questions. So question two, it was to one decimal place and we were 0 0.005 further up. Uh, we had five extra in the hundreds column and that's half of one decimal place. So that's worked out. Same thing with question three. We ran to one decimal place and the 0 0.05 that we added on is half decimal place higher. Then let's look at question four. We ran to the nearest integer, the nearest whole number the nearest unit and the 0.5 that we took away is half of that. So for question five, what the lower bound, we've rounded to one decimal place. So we want half a decimal place lower. So the lower bound of 2.6 will be 2.55, which is the smallest number that would round up to 2.6. So moving on to the medium question, now it doesn't say upper or lower bound, it just say bounds. So we want to find both this time. So let's use a method we discussed at the end of the easy questions. We're rounding 15 to the nearest integer. It's being rounded to the nearest integer. And what's half of an integer, a whole one? The units. That would be 0 0.5. So we want plus or minus 
0 0.5 from the 15. So the lower bound would be half below, which would be 14. 0.5 and the upper bound would be 0 0.5 above which would be 15.5 and so those two numbers are the answers now before we move on there's a bit of special notation here what we're going to do is we're going to say our number our mystery number that is rounded to 15 this number was in between 14.5 and 15.5. So we do a little inequality symbol like this. So that would read 14.5 is less than n, our number, and our number n is less than 15.5. Then remember the discussion we had with the upper bounds that the actual upper bound itself would actually round up. So we want to put a little equal sign on our first inequality symbol. And that just tells us that 14.5 is allowed. That would round up to 15. But because we don't have that equal sign on the second inequality symbol, we're actually saying that 15.5 itself is not allowed. But anything below it, up to and including 14.9 recurring, is going to be absolutely fine. Moving on to question two. 84 has been rounded to the nearest integer that's going to be plus or minus 0 0.5. So we have 84. To take away a half, we would have 83.5. We're going to use the same inequality notation. So the less than or equals symbol means we're allowed to have 83.5. That would round up to 84. And then we're going to add half onto 84, which would be 84. 0.5 and then the less than symbol there tells us that we're not actually allowed 84.5 itself that would round up but anything just below that would be fine next question is 570 to the nearest 10 we think well what's half of a 10 half of a 10 would be 5 so we're going to be doing plus or minus 5 for the upper and lower bounds. So take away 5 from 570 would be 565 using the inequality notation. And adding on 5 to 570 would give us 575. And that's it. That's our answer. Now, question 4 and 5 are only to 1 decimal place. So what's half of a decimal place? Well, the decimal place are the tenths. So half of tenth or half the tenth is going to be in the hundredths column so it's going to be plus or minus 0 0.05 five hundredths a half of a tenth so looking at question four we have 1.2 so we're we'll taking away a five from that last number which will give us 1.15 have the same notation. Then we add on 0 0.05, just add a 5 on the end. 1.25 is our answer. Same thing for question 5. We have 6.7. That's going to give us 6.65. I'm going to say take 5 off. It's the next place value over. So that's off the hundredths, not the tenths, which is where the 7 is. We've got the same notation. And then we pop in a 5 on the end, 6.75. And again, I'm not adding 5 to the 7. I'm putting the 5 into the next place value over to give 6.75. And again, we have our answer. Now, for the third questions, we'll use upper and lower bounds in calculations. So question 1, we want the upper bound of 4.9 plus 9.6. Now, both of those numbers have already been rounded. It's not told us what they've been rounded to. But because these numbers are written to one decimal place, then I assume they've been rounded to one decimal place. What this is all about what is the largest number that 4.9 would round to, be rounded down to. So that would be 4.95. And then we say, what's the largest number that 9.6 uh, could be would round down to 9.6 and that would be 9.5 so what we're going to do now is we are going to do that calculation instead so we have 4.95 plus 9.65 let's use a method so don't make any mistakes 5 plus 5 is 10 carry the 1 9 plus 6 is 15 plus the 1 we carried is 16 
carry the 1. 4 plus 9 is 13, plus 1 we carried is 14, carry the 1. And then remember, in column addition, the decimal places should be all lined up. And now we have our answer, which is 14.6. So 14.6 is the largest possible true answer to 4.9 plus 9.6, considering that that's not actually the calculation we're doing, those numbers being rounded. So what could it be if it was the largest possible numbers that had been previously rounded down? Question two is a multiplication, but it follows the same thing. So we're going to change 62 times 21 into something else. So this one, again, it's not told us what it's rounded to. But because these are whole numbers, I'm assuming they've been rounded to the nearest whole number. So half a whole number will be a 0.5, or the upper bound. So that would be 62.5 times 21.5. They are both the largest possible numbers that could round down to 62 and 21. So now we're going to calculate that. Now, I'm tempted to do a written method for this, but a question like this would likely be on the calculator paper. So we go ahead and pop 26.5 times 21.5 into a calculator. We're going to get 1,343.75. And that's our answer. If you're worried about being able to do this without a calculator, then go and have a look at the video on multiplying decimals, and that should get you confident. So now moving on to question three, we are going to find the lower bound of 79 plus 59. Again, we've not been told where it's rounded to, but because of whole numbers, it's a good bet than rounded to the nearest whole number. So if it's a lower bound, I'm going to go 0 0.5 below 79 and 0 0.5 below 59. And I'm going to do that calculation. 78.5 plus 58. Point five. So 5 plus 5 is 10, carry the 1. 8 plus 8 is 16, and the one we carried is 17, carry the 1. 7 plus 5 is 12, plus the one we carried is 13, carry the 1. Decimal places are going to be lined up in a column addition. So the final answer is going to be 137. Moving on to question 4, it gets lower bounds. This one, I'm going to guess, has been rounded to the nearest one decimal place because that's where it's written as. So we're going to go 500 below these numbers to find the lower bound. So 5.65 plus 6.25. So that final number has just gone down by one and we've popped a 5 on the end. So let's add these numbers up. Now, I think I'll try a bit of a mental arithmetic this time. So 5 plus 6 would give me 11. And then 60 plus 20 would give me 80. And the 5 and 5 would give me another 10. So that'll be 90. So the answer should be 11.9. But feel free to use a column method to double check that. Now, so the final question. Now, again, these are written to one decimal place. So that's probably what they've been rounded to. They find the lower bound. I'm going to go down by five hundredths. So in 9.3, I'm going to go down by one number to 9.2 and put a five on. And in 4.6, again, that last digit, it's going to go down by one and I'm going to add on a five. Now, again, we could do a really big column multiplication. Um, I wouldn't do that with mental arithmetic, but the likelihood is this is going to be a calculator question for us. So in our calculator, we'll type 9.25 multiplied by 4.55, and that should give us 42.0875. And a question like this, we absolutely don't want to round our answer uh, because we're finding the lowest possible number that, that calculation could give us if the question has been rounded. Only round answers if you've been explicitly told to by the question. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.